Welcome to our worship on this first Sunday of Christmas, the 26th of December 2021, coming from St Mark's Church in Reigate. Today is also the feast of St Stephen, the first Christian martyr. And so on this second day of Christmas, we particularly remember and commemorate him, as well as continuing our Christmas celebrations. As you watch this broadcast, perhaps you can join in with the usual responses of the hymns and with the Lord's Prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We meet to celebrate the coming of Christ into the world. Grace and peace be with you, and keep you in the love of Christ. We sing together the carol that speaks of Christian service, demonstrated on this day, the Feast of Stephen, many centuries ago. Good King Wenceslas. Let us pray. Christ born for us, Son of God given for us, help us to know you, to worship and serve you all our days. Amen. As Stephen rebuked God's people for not listening to the word of God, let us confess our stubbornness and sin, which resists the Holy Spirit. You call us to listen to your voice. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You command us to flee from idolatry. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
you ask us to forgive our persecutors. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We join together in singing the Gloria to a setting by David Thorne, the St. Thomas Mass. The Collect for the Feast of St. Stephen, the First Martyr. Let us pray in the peace of this Christmas celebration that our joy in the birth of Christ will last forever. Gracious Father, who gave the first martyr Stephen grace to pray for those who took up stones against him, grant that in all our sufferings for the truth we may learn to love even our enemies and to seek forgiveness for those who desire our hurts, looking up to heaven, to him who was crucified for us, Jesus Christ, our mediator and advocate, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our anthem for today picks up on the theme of a day two days from now, the Holy Innocents on Tuesday, the St. Mark singers sing the Coventry Carol.
Our first reading today is brought to us by Sylvia Weatherald. A reading from Acts chapter 7. Stephen said to the high priest and the council, You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you are forever opposing the Holy Spirit, just as your ancestors used to do. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, and now you have become his betrayers and murderers. You are the ones that received the law as ordained by angels, and yet you have not kept it. When they heard these things, they became enraged and ground their teeth at St. Stephen. Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing the hymn, Silent Night, Holy Night.
Alleluia, Alleluia. I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Alleluia. A reading from Matthew chapter 10, verses 17 to 22. Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus summoned the twelve and sent them out with the following instruction. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his children, and children will rise against their parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The angels have sung. The shepherds have gathered. People, young and old, met in churches all over the world on Christmas Eve to hear again the touching story of Mary's firstborn son, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. In many households, the extended family were home together for the first time in who knows how many months, even with all the restrictions now in place. Maybe even the grandchildren came to church. And back at home, there might have been mulled wine, presents, the star on top of the tree. This, many would say, is what Christmas should be all about. Warm feelings, gathered families, the values of home and hearth. Christmas should, bring, should comfort us, bring us together in cherished traditions. God bless us, everyone. It's no wonder that people who want Christmas and Christianity to be like that are so rarely in church on St. Stephen's Day. In fact, of course, this year, we're only holding our service online because we thought there would be very few in church. It's hard to imagine a more jarring contrast than the one between the mood set by cosy Christmas comforts and the mood set by today's Bible readings. Unless it is, perhaps, the contrast between that Christmassy mood and the reading set for the day after tomorrow, the commemoration of King Herod's mass slaughter of Israel's innocent babies. But it's not by accident that the church invites us to set aside time to observe occasions like these right now. These readings were not chosen for us because someone failed to pay attention to the season of comfort and joy. As difficult as they may sound, we need to hear these Bible readings today the second day of Christmas. Stephen serves God with grace and power and is stoned to death on a trumped-up charge. Jesus, as his own crucifixion draws near, laments the fate of those who are too hard-hearted to receive God's messengers. Listen even to the language of the readings. Blood, desolation, killing, disaster. 
Yes, the lectionary compilers are perfectly aware that all this is anything but Christmassy. It is, however, true to life. And it reflects something we might miss if we only listened to Christmas stories. The very real conflict introduced into human lives by the coming of the Word of God. Stephen, one of the first Christian vocational deacons, was also the first Christian martyr. He was not executed for being obnoxious or for being a criminal. The kinds of things the Bible in the Acts of the Apostles tells us about him are that he was a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, that he was full of grace and power and did great wonders and signs among the people. Even to the council who put him on trial, Stephen's face had a strangely angelic look. But you know, not everyone reacts to angels positively. If we don't want heaven around, we're not likely to welcome its inhabitants. They killed Stephen, not just in spite of, but because of his holiness. After all, if we're trying to push God away, the things that remind us of God have got to go too. Now these days, we could almost go through all the Christmas motions without being reminded much of God. So let's not ask ourselves about Christmas. Let's look at other places in our lives. What do we do when the word of God turns up with something we don't want to hear? There are so many ways to resist. And they don't all require picking up stones like Stephen's accusers did. How do we push the word of God away? We put off dealing with the issue. We stop praying. We focus on something we think the church did wrong so we can stay home, wallowing in our own self-righteousness. We hold on to the status quo. All of this is resistance. And most of us have been there in our life with God at some time or another. After all, if we are following Jesus, we must know what it is to experience opposition. There are always consequences to that momentous a decision. Now, many of the things that happen when we decide to take Jesus seriously are indeed very positive. We find new meaning in life. We discover a community that crosses boundaries of age and race and gender. We are energized by the power of the Holy Spirit. But some of the consequences of being a follower of Christ are not at all pleasant. Living in England, and particularly in this southeastern quarter of England, we may never be martyred like Stephen although believers are not so secure in that guarantee in some other parts of our world. But we will have to make sacrifices. We will have to set limits. And we will be ridiculed. We will find, as Stephen did, that when people bear witness to the word of God, a reaction comes. Philosopher Peter Kreeft has written, if you confess at a fashionable cocktail party that you are plotting to overthrow the government or that you molest porcupines or bite bats heads off, you will soon attract a buzzing, fascinated, 
sympathetic circle of listeners. But if you confess that you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, you will find yourself suddenly alone with a distinct chill in the air. Don't we think the same thing will happen if we confess that if we really believe that, Christ, that, that believe the Christmas carols, if we start serving others for Christ, as Stephen did, if we let into our hearts God's yearning to gather all people into one, if we do those things, there will be consequences. The church knows this. And give us days like today to think about it. To recognise not just the glory of the word of God, but the cost of letting that word speak. And having seen both that glory and that cost, to say yes again to God and to God's word. Thank God we have Christmas to draw us to the manger and teach us to adore the infant Jesus. But we cannot let our faith stop at the manger any more than we can freeze a baby in time so that it will always be cute and harmless. So if St Stephen's Day jars us a little bit, that's okay. Because yesterday's Christ child, who was wrapped in swaddling clothes and cradled in his mother's arms, is now an adult. He's not cute. And he's definitely not harmless. He invites us today to take him as seriously as Stephen did, no matter what the consequences. Amen. We sing the hymn, led by the choral scholars of Martin in the Fields. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Our faith is in the living God, and so we declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, 
who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Full of the Holy Spirit, let us approach the throne of grace and bring our prayers to Jesus, our Lord. Sarah Cousins leads us in prayer. O oh God, we thank you for the message of peace that Christmas brings to our distracted world. Give peace among the nations, peace in our land, peace in our homes and peace in our hearts as we remember the birth at Bethlehem of the Prince of Peace. We give thanks for all our clergy, bishops, archdeacons and priests and all the diocesan staff of Southwark, giving thanks for all the work that they do on our behalf and praying for their refreshment and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we give thanks for Saint Stephen, the first martyr, praying that we will be faithful witnesses of your grace and glory. God, who gave his only son to be our salvation, we thank you for the work of all charities at this time of year, praying especially for the Children's Society, Smote, the Samaritans, and the Renewed Hope Trust. Loving God, we remember our neighbours and work colleagues, praying for them and those who live in Yew Tree Lane and Rygate and Redhill YMCA, that they would all hear the message of Christmas and know the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ in their lives. Gracious God, we call to mind all those who we know are struggling with life. We especially ask for your comfort and healing for all those who are coping with terminal illness and ask you to be close to those who care for them. We give you thanks for those who have been healed or are in the process of recovery and recuperation. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers. Jean Hovey, Alison Stagg, Alec Parrish, Yvonne Powell, Jackie Wims, Ruston Biggs, Margaret Stewart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we remember those who have departed this life and thank you for the good that you have worked in their lives. Comfort all those whose lives are saddened by the death of a loved one. Be with them in their loneliness and help them to know that Jesus born in Bethlehem is the light of the world which no darkness can quench. We remember those whose anniversaries fall at this time. Mary Jones, Peter Leeming, priest, Christopher Martin, priest, Doris Richman, Barbara Baker, Marion Bird, Evelyn Baker, Doris Burns, C. Carey Taylor, priest, Margaret Elizabeth Taylor, Huell Spencer Ellis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Son of God, your mysterious coming is beyond our understanding. In all the challenges, joys and changes of life, we pray that you will dwell among us as you promised. Help us to serve you in any way that we can knowing that you are with us day by day through the joys of Christmas and into the uncertainty of the new year, especially in the light of the ongoing pandemic. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We sing the hymn, What Child Is This? who laid to rest on Mary's lap, is sleeping.
Let us pray. Merciful Lord, we thank you for the signs of your mercy revealed in birth and death. Save us by the coming of your Son and give us joy in honouring Stephen, first martyr of the new Israel, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. God give you grace to be faithful witnesses, to see heaven opened and the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those who love and pray for this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.